everybody. Welcome back for our final fantastic, wonderful, celebratory episode of Fantabulous Fright Fest. Um, I won. I did it. I made it through this stupid thing, nah. and I got a celebratory uh, viewing of Frat House Massacre and Nick's like tidy whitey laden donger. Yeah. Um. So thank you all for sticking with us through this. This has been wonderful. I know this last episode is coming out late. Um, we had a lot of issues trying to get a copy of the film to post for you all. And because it's one of those things where you can't find this movie anywhere, we kind of had to wait to uh, uh, to air uh, to record this until we could post the video for a while. Um, so thank you so much. We really appreciate you sticking with it. Um, and now with that, uh, I'm turning over the hosting duties to Nick so he can uh, talk about that film he made long time ago. Hey, how's it going? So uh, we're going to talk about Fred House Massacre today, which is a film that was uh, filmed in 2011, I believe. It was a long time. It did not come out in 2011. You were entering, I think you were... I was a senior in college. You were a senior in college? It was my. It was the end of my first semester senior year. We filmed the second half of the film my second semester senior year. So I filmed it... Oh, I thought it was earlier than that. No, no. It was right when I was coming out. Um, I guess I was thinking it was when we were in, uh, finishing up high school. No, 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 no. That's just guy look very young. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about the film. I think it's a good way to do it. So the film cool. takes place in the 1970s. It is an homage to the old Grindhouse 70s slasher films. Um, it is about two brothers, Sean and Bobby. Sean goes off to college uh, and his younger brother, Bobby, ends up getting in... I think it's a car accident and ends up in a coma. Um, so he's in a coma while Sean's at college. Sean joins a fraternity, the uh, Delta Sigma Epsilon fraternity. Uh, yeah, I, I caught that. D-I-E. Oh, my um, God. And so he gets in there and they go through their hazing rituals. Well, their hazing rituals are something dark and deceivious. And his little brother, his older brother, Sean, dies. Um, his <laughs> then, hold on, it keeps getting, Sean's spirit then gets transferred to the body of Bobby, his younger <laughs> brother. <laughs> yeah. And so Bobby then becomes Sean in perfect 70s horror movie fashion, goes to the scene. Is same, it, though? Yeah. Oh, is yeah. it? Yes, it is. Okay. You just haven't watched enough of these movies. I I haven't. Um, so Bobby then goes to uh, the same college that Sean went to to enact his revenge against the frat brothers that killed him. And after that, all of a sudden, people start dying. Not only are the frat brothers killing somebody, but someone is killing the frat brothers, and you don't know who it is. I mean, don't you, though? No, but you don't. But, but don't you, though? <laughs> But you, did you figure, did you know who was doing it the whole yeah, time? Yeah, no, the entire time. How did you figure it out? I didn't even know. I didn't have the answers in the script when I had it. Seriously? I didn't you know, didn't figure it out? No, I didn't know the movie was over. The acting choices were pretty clear. Oh, no. You watched that way more intensely than I did. Yeah, yeah no, I, actually, I, I we, actually didn't watch it that intensely. I was just like, she's doing it. Um, yeah, we did not have... They're in cahoots. We didn't, uh -huh. we didn't know. We didn't have the ending of the script. Oh, really? Yeah. We did not, I didn't know until I saw the movie. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had no idea because I was only filming like I was off set by that point. Um, and my script only went so far as the last death scene. So before we get into all the, the content, I would I would love to ask you a couple of questions oh, yeah, about sure. your experiences being in the film. Yeah. Um, so how, what, how was the uh, the cast working together? It was great. I actually, you know, I mean, I've, I've done a, a chair of independent films at this point. Um, mm -hmm. I've worked at this company a couple times okay. um, through my years. Uh I I mean maybe it was because of my first film and so that's like my experience. Everything is is uh, yeah is pepper. With. I had a great time. It was a really good group. It was funny because there was kind of two contingents of actors. There was like the New York cast sure. and the LA cast. Okay, um, and I was the kid from Chicago um, who just was randomly a part of the cast. <laughs> Quote, Chicago. I was from the, downstate I was, yeah, Illinois. That's why I auditioned Miller, in Chicago. Um, so it was really good. I made some friends that I'm still friends with from that. Um, the director was Draven. No, Draven was the writer and he assistant director. The director's okay. name was Alex Pucci, okay. um, who also did uh, Camp Slaughter, uh, Violence of the Mind is another one of their films. Um, it was it was a good time. I really liked working with Alex. He has a very clear actor aesthetic that he enjoys, mm -hmm. um, which if you, if you did watch the movie, you kind of see. There are a couple of us who don't fit that aesthetic. Sure. It's like me and the actor who played Moose and maybe the uh, <laughs> actor who played, his name was Jim, the funny one, the okay. curly haired funny one. Um, otherwise, we all kind of fit the same yeah. like 
look. Yeah, you couldn't tell anybody apart because they all looked exactly the same. Yeah, which I mean, horror movies, but like there are a couple. Of, there's like Moose is like this big, big, huge dude named Moose. Sure. Um, there's the goofy guy who's like goofy with curly hair. Um, so where was this film shot? Um, so it was shot between some of it was shot in L.A. Um, mm-hmm. some of it was shot in Bo- Boston. Most of it though, which is where I shot, was shot in Ohio on two different college campuses. It was shot on OSU's campus. And, um, uh, shit, a small liberal arts college, uh, okay. shot some of the other stuff. Mainly though, it was Ohio and Boston. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Um, so we shot a lot of scenes, of, like an old warehouse in Boston, which is, or in Ohio, which was probably the worst part of it. Cause yeah. it was freezing fucking cold and we had no heat. Oh, man. Um, so that whole boxing scene was in a non heated, uh, warehouse in the middle of an Ohio winter. So it was like negative 32 degrees. Oof. It was awful. That That's the only bad. thing I did not like about shooting that film. Um, I had a blast with it. It was a lot of fun to cool. shoot. Cool. Um, um, yeah. all right. One last question before we get, get yeah. properly started. Okay. Shoot. What kind of a budget did this film have? A million dollars. A million dollars. Yeah. Paramount, Paramount was one of the funders in it. So okay. Paramount bought, I believe it was Paramount. Paramount bought Camp Slaughter, which had, was, which was called Camp Days before that. So Alex released, Camp Alex and Draven released Camp Days and Paramount bought it. Okay. And so part of that distribution deal was money towards their next horror feature, mm-hmm. which is this. It's also important to note this movie won like a fair amount of awards in the indie horror circuit. Like okay. it did really well. I just don't think it was Camp Slaughter had more mainstream appeal, I think, mm-hmm. in terms of what it was trying to do. I think this one's harder to sell because I think Grindhouse films are just harder the grindhouse yeah they're just harder to sell unless I mean, you're tarantino or it's, rob zombie it's grind, grindhouse i mean yeah i guess that's true yeah. rob zombie but even does rob really zombie well even had trouble getting his first two films sold you know um but in terms of like the actual i like, guess that's true yeah house of a thousand corpses was a uh, was a very small indie release like and we then, had to go to a special hidden uh theater to kind of see yeah. that thing and then i mean that one did well so his next movie devil's rejects got a bigger budget that's and true. so on but um, I think it's just hard to make these films because they're exploitation films. I mean, at, at their core, that's what they are. Um, and it's about how much can you exploit your cast and how much violence can you shove into, you know, what, 90 minutes of a film? Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I didn't think it was all that exploitative. Really? You don't think someone getting um, raped in the middle of the movie is all that exploitative? It wasn't that graphic. Okay. Um, like it, like none of the uh, the choices were all that explicit. So it's like, okay, she's being raped, but like I don't really feel feel it um okay because that was one of the things that i thought about while watching it was but again i i think it fits the genre of the film um i think that's something that in if i was watching this and not even i mean i was in it so i have a perspective but upon watching it i mean don't get me wrong look none of the things that happen in this film yeah. are good but it's a horror film yeah. of course it's going to be fucked up things that are happening oh, that's yeah. what a horror movie is like you're not like oh gosh i really want to be that guy he's such a charming lad like, no it's a fucking <laughs> horror movie you're supposed to kind of hate everybody um it is should speaking of turn i should point out that one of the actors in this film michael galante who is an awesome dude is uh. is a pretty fucking big deal oh yeah yeah like he cool. is he I don't has know been who that was he, you, if you watch like CW or Freeform, you would know him because he's been uh-huh. in a couple shows. Anyway, okay. he's he's doing really well, so it's cool. really cool to give him a shout out and enjoy this. I don't know how much he claims his film anymore, but um, um, yeah, that's a good question. We should look on his uh his IMDb oh, page there. and see. Oh, is it? Yeah, cool. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, uh, the lead actor in this too, the one who played the one killing everybody, Michael played the younger brother of him. Uh, he's been around for a while too. I mean, there were some actors who have done stuff and that's kind of a hallmark of the alex pucci films you'll catch like a couple actors who have gone on to do like bigger things um mm-hmm. and it's usually the actors who are like the the off types who aren't the like stereotypical types um but yeah, it was a good you know listen i think this movie does a good job at what it's supposed to do um it's violent i thought the effects for the budget are really good um aren't you supposed to be asking the questions no i'm you, you want my feedback <laughs> Here's so that's my my take on it so what did you think of this movie since you decided you wanted to watch this movie so badly i did i really wanted to watch this aside from the fact that you made this uh, over a decade ago at yeah. this point like almost two decades really 
Um, that would be tw- it's not 20 years. I was, I, guess that's true. I was 22 20. years old. It's like 10 years ago. All right. So either way, it's been a decade it's been since a long you made time. this thing. And I have never gotten to see it. We, we always, uh, you always promised me I would, um, you wanted to take me to one of the, the premieres way back when. Um, you couldn't go and, for some reason. Yeah. I can't remember what the rationale I think you just, was. I don't think you had the money. Like we, it was paid for us to go, but it wouldn't have been paid for you to go. Yeah. It could have been a money thing. It could have been, it may have been like a, I was seeing my now wife thing at that time. It could have like been grad I, school. Cause we were out here. Cause I lived uh in my first apartment oh i bet that's what it was i think it was either grad school or money money yeah because we got a budget to we go were, but we were on our own at that point yeah yeah um either way i've never gotten to see this movie and so to finally have an opportunity and a reason to watch it was was really wonderful <laughs> um so when you say what did i, I mean look uh, I uh, my thoughts on horror films are well stated on this uh, little True. mini series. But you um, wanted to watch this one. I, this was your choice. I do not like horror films. I do not like feeling scared and uncomfortable. I think it sucks. But did this scare you no, at all? Not yeah. At all. So like that's uh, where this. Effect, I don't think it's a scary movie. So here's the thing: like there were a few moments where like a blade would come out, and I'm like, I'm gonna look away. I'm gonna look away, and then kind of like look at it through your fingers because I had to, you know, be able to talk about. It. I'm like, oh, oh wait, no, this isn't. That's no, fine, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. It was so I, I feel like this movie, um, from a critical standpoint, it, it does exactly what you're saying it, it, it set out to do. Yeah. Um, and that is a, a, a testament of its artistic vision. Um, it is a very '70s grindhouse film. Uh, it's set in the '70s. It is shot like it was in the '70s. The camera doesn't move a whole lot. The actors are very much static. It and was in place. shot on 35 millimeter film. Um, the last thing I ever shot an actual film. So there's that. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing, like the issue I had with it was that it did that. Um, <laughs> it did what it was supposed. Yeah, to Yeah, no, like I, if. I mean, look, in my opinion, you can make a 70s grindhouse film with modern day standards. You can adhere to all of the things that make a grindhouse film a grindhouse film without having to make it the way it used to be made. Mm -hmm. Um, For example, I really liked the decision of having the um, the female character who was who's been who'd been wronged uh, in the film. The the heroine. Nikki is the actress's Um, name. I can't remember the character's name. I really liked that choice. I really liked that um, she kills the the perceived protagonist of the entire film (laughs) because he was also a bad person it's true i appreciated that what i didn't appreciate was like the sort of like witchcraft black lady who serves no purpose other than like giving the magical spell to the character yo she's psychic son um yeah exactly like oh the one black house slave has to be the one who's uh giving the the magic powers like oh she's she's the wicked witch she's like it's such an awful trope that you don't have to adhere to. You don't have to adhere to that racist trope in a film. Um, you can update it. Which is funny because I think that's something that, that horror movies in general, and we talked about a little bit about this even when we were on October. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that horror movies still really fall into that trap a lot, even newer ones, in mm-hmm. a way that I think you're right can be changed. It was yeah, yes, yeah. you're absolutely right. Like films today still don't treat uh, their minority cast members well, and if they do, it's kind of tokenism. Yeah. Um, but in this film, like it is so explicitly a callback to the um, to the explicit racism of the '70s. That I just kind of went like, no, you don't you don't have to do this. You don't have to make this choice with the script, with the, the filming, with any. There's nothing about that character that in. Uh, innately calls out needs to be black no um, i think i think you I think you nailed it. it it is in all ways shape and form it is just a true homage so it's also important to, to point out that the person who wrote this film mm-hmm. um is like a true lover of horror movies like i don't know oh, that's great yeah i just think it's like when i look at stuff like that while i don't disagree i think that was very intentional and in it's fact that like he was trying to write and make something that was as close to an homage as you could sure. for right or wrong, whether that choice works or not. Like same thing about the psychic, like 
Sean Sean's mind going into Bobby, which you know what? Like I didn't like it, but whatever. No, it was a it was a choice, and like that choice worked for me just yeah. fine. Like that was a trope that oh yeah no cool adhere to that like use yeah. that uh, that trope in your film, but you can get rid of some of the um, some of the other like there was a lot of like language in the film that was just like this doesn't like why why does everybody have to be cunt bitch slut whore whatever it's like i understand what you're going for like we need to understand that these are the bad guys but after they kill someone hey i get it they're the bad guys exploitation i mean that's i mean that's, um, that's what it is hey you wanted to know my opinion no no I'm no i'm just telling you like i think that just while i don't disagree because i think when you lean on those crutches linguistically like it, uh-huh. it, it brings a script down I, I think it's just really lean into all of that that same thing with the deaths. I mean, the deaths in this are brutal. Really, a dude gets torn apart by a car. I mean, look, we that's have my favorite, seen that's my favorite death scene, so by the way. much worse in mainstream uh, horror movies at this point. That, like, when you went into this, you were warning like Chris, this is really like this is oh my god, Chris, this is the most I... graphic shit you've ever seen. And I was like, I watched this movie, and I was like, motherfucking Nick dies from a gas. Oh yeah, he dies off camera. I what have, the fuck? I know I die on camera. Some of shit. I have actually, I think, one of the best worst deaths in this entire film. Um, I just went like, oh, this is the only death in this entire thing where I'm like, that's borderline justified. Like he did the thing they weren't supposed to do, and now he dies. Like. It's dumb. I lost but, a fucking okay. boxing match. That's all I did. I lost a boxing match. Yeah, but then like they said, okay, whatever you do, don't touch this. Oh no, they were gonna um, kill me anyway. Then that's fine. Like maybe they were. They but were gonna regardless, kill me. they don't get there. Um because instead you're like, I'm gonna play with this thing that they've told me not to play with, and then you die. I'm like, okay. Like of all the unjustified deaths in this film, this is the one where I'm like, Okay, yeah, no, like he broke the rules, so he has to die. I get this death. So because I think the question I have for you, because I think this movie is there there are two things I want to point on. Um I think this movie largely relies on the death scenes. Um largely relies on the death scenes. Uh what did you think of them for the budget that they had? So it was a million dollars. So when I watched this, when I watched it the first time, even when we were filming it, I was really impressed by I think it's Matt Gorgon or Matt Corgan's mm. makeup ability. Um what they did with the budget they had, I thought was incredible. That includes the makeup I had done, all the facial work from getting just beat it's still on my Facebook page. Um so what did you think about that watching it with the makeup work? I felt like um so so here's the deal. I don't know how much a million dollars is. Mm. Um, I don't know how much a million dollars is in special effects. I don't know how much a million dollars is in a in a budget in a film like this. I don't know how much a million dollars is in 2011 money or whatever. Oh yeah, that's a was. good point. I didn't think about that. Um, what I will say is that from the way you had described it to me over and over, it was a major letdown. Really? Um, well, because okay. again, you have to remember, it's been a decade That's of you true. hyping up how graphic and brutal yeah. and like I still really talented is. this is. And so yeah. I was watching this and I'm like, really there that's just like a razor blade that like shoots out red paint that's all that is that's like that's and they use that same effect for like two or three different it's things chocolate, and i'm like chocolate okay sauce. whatever um it tastes good and so whenever i was watching that i was just like this isn't that bad this isn't like i like there's no like skin peeling back from it yeah. where you're like really getting the like it is much as you have said repeatedly like a very traditionally 1970s and in, mm-hmm. uh, indie slasher film and so because there wasn't the modernization of special effects either, I was just sitting there going like, this isn't that bad. Like there's just paint on his chest. Like, no, okay, I get it. Yeah. Um, there were some really impressive special effects. Done. Like, uh, as, as uninspired as I think that choice was for the guy getting torn in half by the cars, I think the the like the special effects there weren't bad. Like, yeah, I thought it actually looked really good for what they were going for. Um, I thought when uh, what is it in the the barn scene where what I don't I just still don't know what thing goes through the guy's chest. Uh, it's pick for, pitchfork. Oh no, no, it's a big it's a sickle like a sickle blade. Yeah, he gets like pitchforked in the dick or something. You've like made that, him. Right? That's Tyler Barnes. You remember him? Oh, is that Tyler? That's Tyler. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. I remember we went to his party yep. uh, a few several uh, Irish uh, days ago. Yeah. <laughs> Irish day, the Saint Irish Saint day, Saint whatever that day. is. Yeah, yeah. That was, um, that was Tyler who gets killed in the barn. And yeah, I remember poop. we went to like the place that had like uh, Irish drinks and or really whatever. good pizza. It was, did have good pizza. It did. Um, um, it was our first year in New York, I it was, think. It was that's so Tyler gets off in the barn. Okay, yeah, that was a um, like I actually really enjoyed that scene. Like, I thought that was a really fun creative scene where they built tension well. 
Um, you saw it coming and then they, they waited. I thought a lot of the deaths were kind of quick and uninspired. I can um, agree. But with I really that. liked that one. I, th- I thought that scene was really, was really good. I think my, besides the car, which I really like the two special effects, I think in this movie that really worked well in terms of accomplishing kind of a, a I don't know if it's gross out the right, right word, uh, the like, glass in the eye that uh, Michael's character gets and they're in the chairs and they're torturing him and he comes over and he cuts his eye with glass. Oh, yeah. That eye shit gets me every time. I think I may have looked away for a little bit of that. That one. Oh. Like, I, it was one of those, like, I was looking through my fingers like, mm, mm, this is the moment I'm not going to stare at this. Yeah. Like, I knew it was coming. I mean, I'm interested in the story. Nah. Yeah, that one's rough. And then the when Tyler's character, when we get killed in the bar and gets hit in the face with poop. <laughs> That was supposed to be poop. Yeah, it was. It was actually, so the story behind that, because it's a good story, is it was a brownie that they soaked in water and got really mushy, and it was supposed to be thrown and hit him in the chest, and it hit him right in the fucking face. <laughs> so him running after him was not was actually what happened. It's one of those great like, moments where he got fucking a, brown, a sloggy brownie right in his face. Um, I like it. So the other thing I was going to ask you about, so one of the most random parts of this movie is probably my favorite, and it's the random dan- choreographed dancing at the party mm-hmm. did you like that or not like that? i actually thought that was fun i thought i um, love that part of the movie i thought that was one of the things that was kind of missing in this film a little bit was more more life mm-hmm. um because there's a lot of like hatred and death and like exposition but seeing like whatever is driving these people to kill is one of the things that that i was missing like is it like are you killing these guys because i have no explanation i have yeah. no explanation like not even like off the top of my head what i could magically come up with yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, but in this scene, like that, like that dance scene, uh, actually set the uh, set the mood well for what was about to come. Um, I didn't necessarily need the like additional explicit racism of like the "I'm going to murder you" DJ mm-hmm. thing. We're like, man, seriously, like why? Like just just don't make him black then. Like if, okay, go ahead, go out there and like about to kill the guy. And just why is it gotta be black? Just like he's killing everybody anyway. Um, I can tell you why because he was a PA on set and they needed someone to do it. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> That's, he's in New York now too. Um, no good for him. Yeah, I'll he's shake his hand and an, thank you for being a good sport. He's an awesome dude. Um, uh, uh, and look, yeah, and again, I like, don't make like, this isn't anything against the people who are working. No, on the no, film, no, no. It's, it's, it's just a funny, film. funny tidbit um, that he was, he was just, he was one of the PAs. Yeah, and they had him fill in, and he crushed it. Um, all right. So one of the things that you mentioned a little bit earlier that I am, I'm curious about because I had a different. I think I may have a different interpretation. Mm-hmm. Who is the person killing them in the barn? It's it's Nikki. It's uh, let me give you the character Diane, Nikki, the actress, the, the woman, the dark haired woman. Okay, then why is what's his face's shoes all muddy? Because they're explicitly trying oh. to tell you he's been in the barn killing everybody, and that the guy knows. I don't actually know. So I, I'm assuming, like, I think the story is supposed to be that they're working together throughout the film. See, I had always taken it again. I could. This is a. This would be an actual question for the writer. Um, is that he doesn't actually kill anyone until he gets them at the end. Like his targets are mainly just those uh, two, the two, the two brothers. Um, and the the younger brother is mainly just because. See, in my interpretation was that she hates everybody. He hates those two. So they work together to make this happen. Um, and that he's killing whoever he can kill because he knows they're all evil and who gives mm-hmm. a fuck. Um, I mean, Draven, if you're listening to this, please write in. Let us know. Yeah. We'll, we'll give an addendum to this. It's actually um, good. He, he would be the one to ask. Uh but that being said, yeah, I think I, I I find it interesting that one of the actors here may like because I think that was pretty explicit with that scene. Well, and that's the thing to remember though, we didn't have as someone on so when I got the script, I had the bulk script, but like that end bit, I just didn't have. It mm-hmm. just didn't get to us, and we couldn't talk about it. Sure, because no one knew what the actual. Yeah, the only people who knew the ending were Alex Draven. I think Nikki knew. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, and, it's pretty explicit. She did because of her performance. Yeah, and then I think. I think Rain, the guy who played Sean or played Bobby, I think he knew too, but I don't remember who knew and who didn't. I know I was not one of the people because I basically had a blackout script at the end. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. That would be a question for Draven. Um. Because it is a little unclear. I mean, again, I think that's kind of how horror movies are sometimes. Right. Um. So I guess. That's a really interesting comments. What was the other thing I was going to ask you? Oh, so what do you think of the casting? Because something I think is really interesting about this is not just this movie. It is the casting of 
Alex Pucci, who I do like a lot. Um, what did you think of this cast? I think it was a very, I think one of the things that, that doesn't always help these films as, as a group of films, from that filmmaker, um, if I'm taking myself out as an actor is that the cast all look the same. Like it is a very, like, I, I literally got two or three different sets of people confused in every scene. Yeah. Um, like, especially for the start of the film where you're just starting to figure out who these characters are. Mm-hmm. I was routinely getting uh, the younger brother and one of the frat house guys and the older brother and a different frat house guy confused. Yep, and I know. so I would routinely be sitting there going like, wait, but you're dead. Oh, wait, no, because you're actually. OK, so I guess you are you. And then this guy is this one. And I know exactly the actors you're talking about. Too, sure. Which is the best, I, which is, I don't because I don't you know. Yeah. But, but I'm saying I yeah. know I know who you're talking about in my head. I'm like, I know who you're confusing. Um, so, look, this is an indie film. I'm sure they had a limited budget. They had a limited uh, uh, pool of people to select from and so on and so forth. But that being said, man, you know, change funny? it up. I think. But that's the thing. I think that because we got decent, we got paid decently to do this one. It wasn't yeah. huge and it was different. I mean, I think everyone got paid differently. It wasn't, you know, like we all make the same amount of money. Right. Um, I think that that truly is just an aesthetic of the director. Um, because like I said, I've been in other things with him and it's kind of how it goes, which is so funny because within that, it doesn't aesthetic, work for the audience. Then that's what I'll say. Um, people fucking love this shit. Um, but also think about the audience that it's, it's targeting too. Um, but I had always laughed. It's funny when I went back and watched this, I realized that like it was saying there's me, there's the big guy who plays moose and then uh rabbit. Who's the funny one or like the three non lookalike, <laughs> like the different actors. Yeah. Cause it was a very, like, I don't know if they were actually tall, but they were made to look tall, scrawny and blonde. And then it was like you who is short, thin, thick and muscular mm. um not like cut chisel but just like a thick human being and yeah. a good look for 1970s um and then like you, like moose kind of fit everything else because he was just a big moose he's the man. guy who's actually really big yeah that one i, I mean you could yeah. tell yeah he's um, tall and just big he didn't look big big on camera but he looked big like he yeah. looked thick yeah, he's probably the tallest of the cast. Most of the actors were around my height or like a little bit taller. Oh, because you looked short in that. Yeah, it's because Ryan, the guy who I'm in a lot of scenes with, uh-huh. he's like five, ten, six feet tall. Okay. But the other kid with us, Joe, Joe's my height. The lead actor's my height, who plays the brother. Okay. Um, Mike's probably five ten. John Fleming's five ten. Uh, a lot of the Jack Rabbit, the funny guy, is tall. Everyone else is mm-hmm. about. And then the blonde actress is really tall. She's a model in New York. Um, okay. But otherwise, yeah, most of us were between like 5'8 and 5'10. So not overly tall, but like the actor plays Moose was, he's a big dude. He's probably 6'2, six, 6'3. Six, oh, cool. Yeah. So, which aptly named. Right. Moose. What'd you think of uh, changing hairstyles? Did you notice that? No, no, not really. A couple actors cut or grew their hair out between the filming. <laughs> so like Moose is one of them where he has short hair in one part and then all of a sudden has long hair. I was not watching that closely. Oh, it's one of my favorite favorite like trivia things um i think i'd be remiss if we didn't at least touch a little bit on um uh, some of the uh, the feminism or sexism in this film depending on mm-hmm. how you want to talk about it um so one of the uh the interesting themes of this of this film was uh women as a as a tool rather than as a person um which horror movies and i mean again yes but, but no I understand. um there's the, we can elevate the art form <laughs> um and i was i'm i'm curious if you have any insight into the rationale or if it was purely oh, this is how they did it in the 70s let's continue um i i'm gonna be making assumptions upon the writer and director i would say part of it is it's an homage to the horror movies and it's written like a traditional horror movie mm-hmm. um, up even up through like horror movies into the early nineties, right okay. up until like even the scream kind of phase where things shifted a little bit. Um, yeah. They at least started drawing attention to the fact that women are routinely uh, tools rather than yeah. uh, characters. So, and that's the thing I think, cause we've watched a bunch of horror movies now between, you know, Shocktober and this, um, within horror movies and having watched a lot of them is it's, I think horror movies and, and women characters, female characters have a very interesting dynamic because they're almost always the lead, right? They're almost always the person that comes out in the end and survives for whatever reason. And that's the thing that's really 
Well, I think a lot of it is because throughout history, we've always viewed women as um, passive, docile, and weak, and subsequently putting the audience in the role of the weak one compared to the strong antagonist. Um, theoretically, I think history has has wanted to put the audience in that role. It- uh which in and of itself is an inherently sexist statement. True. And then there's the other side of that argument would say, but they're also the ones who fight through it and survive and overcome that. I mean, that's was one of the things Jamie Normally. Lee. Normally. Yeah. Almost. I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis mentioned that even with the new Halloween movie. She's like, think about it. It's the first movie to be number one and gross X amount of money with a female lead over 55 with an almost entirely female led cast. I mean, mm-hmm. these are things that horror movies do that are really interesting within their shortfalls. And so I think within this film, there's that aspect that you still have a woman who survives, but it's still playing on the tropes of women being victimized. The thing this movie does, though, that I think is important to note is there's a lot of dudes that get victimized in this, which is not always true. Uh, I think I need you to defend that statement. Okay, so we have, I mean, most of the deaths are male, um, which okay. is un, which is not usual for her movie, even at Grindhouse. Um, we have guys being chained up. We have guys being Wait, spanked. I, I missed that one. What was that? We have guys being chained up and then chained, being, up. chained okay. up being spanked with paddles. We have, I mean, there's a lot of homoerotic tendencies in this, which is the opposite of what you tend to see in mainstream horror movies, which is things like that happening to your female characters besides your main one. Um, and I find merit in that but yes i think the women women in this film are still victimized they're still stereotyped except for probably uh nikki's character who ends up being the killer sure um which they make a very clear point with um and so what i'm going to uh to say is i think so i think for a horror film there's an inherent importance to um like like there's an, an inherent nature of Um, treating people badly. Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, men and women are typically treated poorly in film, uh, in horror films. Uh, Women have always gotten a much uh, rougher shake of it. Um, But that's just kind of the way horror films work. Like, everybody dies. That's the way it goes. Yeah. What got to me in this film wasn't even so much like the violence towards the women, um, like the fact that they are told to like, look, be a, you know, a fuck doll, um, Mm -hmm. and all that type of stuff. Um, because I, I get what they're going for here. I don't think it, it's good. It, I'm not sure it works, but it's, I understand what you're going for. The, the thing that bugged me the most was, um, what's her, I don't know the character's name, the blonde girl, Uh, the the leads, um, the girlfriend, Lisa um, is the actress's name, but let me look up the character's name for you. What what got to me was one her lack of characterization as the only um, woman outside of uh, uh, was it Nina or whatever the 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 person who survives. Di- so Diana is the one that is the survivor. Uh, Erica is Lisa's character. So Erica is the character you're talking about. So Diana is the killer. The killer. Mm-hmm. So Diana has a little bit of characterization, which I, again, like I said, I really appreciate Lisa. No, Lisa isn't the name of the, Car- I, the blonde girl, Erica, um, which the fact that I have to phrase it as the blonde girl says yeah. something um, like she is characterized as the blonde girl as like the girl who was with him and is now with him. And that's, that's all you get. Um, yeah. Like that is a character that like you're, you're hanging a lot of, value on like you're like this story um for diane at least hinges on her disapproval of uh of that character's lifestyle um to some effect like there's that big um important scene where they um meet out on the quad and um like they're getting into an argument and there's that like moment where sean is like oh no i just kind of slightly un uh acknowledge that i am in fact sean and not bobby um which i was just kind of like mind oh swap. yeah i was right it is a mind swap i wasn't sure it's but kind I was of pretty unclear. sure <laughs> like it was not the most clear no. artistic decision um, but I was like, I, I'm assuming this is the trope they're going for. So mm. I'm going to go with it. And then there was that conversation with like the black ma- magic lady. It's like, okay, this is very clearly now what they're you, going you for. You swept the minds though. Um, but so like during that quad scene, she just doesn't like, there's nothing there. There is no character here. And it's just, you didn't even have the, uh, like the care for women in this, in this script to say, look, I am going to, 
um, give her some uh, some personality, some trait beyond belonging to a man um, to justify why another woman dislikes her. Can I ask a question that may, this is going to sound shitty. Um, do you think that's the writing or the actress? I, I, I mean, look, so if you want to get into an argument over acting versus writing, we both know where we fall. I was a writer, you were an actor. So we always take that position. I'm going to say it was the writing. Okay. No, I think the I was writing in... lacks. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know there's the argument that an actress or an actor should fill what isn't in the script. Um, so if you want to say it's a failing of everybody, okay. Um, no, regardless, I, I, I think it's a failing. I don't, I don't disagree. Cause at the end of the day, there's only really five women in this movie. I mean, there's some extras, but there are five women with <laughs> extras who all die. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the five women who have speaking roles is you have the, you have Diane, who's the killer. You have Erica, uh-huh. who's the tall blonde. Okay. You have Jackie's character who is in it randomly and gets raped um yeah. you have the other woman who's killed in and the to be bed clear, all the women kind of look the same too yeah um you have the woman who gets killed in the bed who's kind of a random character and after oh, the maid there's the maid too oh yeah, the maid and then the 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 mystic lady um yeah, who also dies but at least she dies off camera true um but um, that, that's about it and um because this is a very male dominated cast and true. so i think when you think about that character being a set piece she kind of is. I mean, she's she's another she's being used, I think, as a tool for revenge, if that makes sense. She's another tool for Bobby's revenge. But uh, Bobby's revenge or Diane's revenge? Both, because I think Sean, uh, Sean, Bobby Sean. Um, yeah, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Sean. Sean. Bobby like Sean. It. Bobby Sean sees her, sees that as a betrayal, right? Because she is now with my, uh that other guy i don't know it never comes up again like after that scene for him it's just like well you killed my my brother you killed me it's not like he goes oh yeah and you're sleeping with my ex-girlfriend like if anything i will say that character is the only person who actually acknowledges that she gets to make a decision that she is an agent in that role like okay i'm i'm angry at you because you chose to sleep with him it wasn't i'm angry at him because he made you sleep with him it's like you chose to so i will i will acknowledge i appreciate that tiny bit of, of Bobby Sean's uh, 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 explanation. Um, no. I, and again, I think that is probably, there are a couple, I think shortcomings on this film and that is one of them is you a have couple? one. Well, again, I look at, it's an indie, yeah, it's, it's an indie uh, slash grindhouse, grindhouse slash, slash film, film that I think, whatever. again, I suppose, I think does what it's supposed to do incredibly well. It does. And it was made with a lot of love. And, and I think it does what it set out to do very, very yeah. effectively. So whenever like I have someone watch this, I told you, I was like, you have to watch this film, watching it for what it is, what it is supposed to be, not what you maybe want it to be. Um, I see. I feel again, when you say that about a movie, mm. I feel like what you're saying is you're already couching it with like, look, this is a bad movie. If you have to couch something like that, then, then what you're, the, the, you shouldn't, no, you just don't get to, you just don't get well, to. So, but the reason I think this movie is couched is because we just, that style of movie, what this is, you don't see a lot in horror anymore. You really don't. I don't, I cannot point the last time I saw a horror movie that tried to do with, I mean, actually I can't devil's rejects. Rob Zombie's Devil's Reject. That was probably right. the last movie that was in the early 2000s. And that like... And I didn't see that one. I saw House, House of a Thousand, Thousand Corpses. Corpses. So for the sake of our conversation, I'm going to refer to House of a Thousand okay, great. Corpses. So we go back even further. That was the last one that did it, which had a much bigger budget. Absolutely. So, so when I couch it, I'm saying this movie did for me exactly what it was trying to do. And what I will say about House of a Thousand Corpses is at least the... And like that movie... I don't want to say it updated the the genre but in some regards it did it took that um texas uh, chainsaw massacre narrative and it allowed um the more of a family di- like those those murderers have a family dynamic like there is a relationship between characters beyond hey we kill people yeah um, and don't get me wrong it goes weird places once you get into like the murder basement and whatnot but th- that i don't god i remember we watched that movie twice and we were like why did we see this a second time i mean and we can get we can get into that movie and the merits of a house of a thousand corpses too but i'm just for this i think it does okay. what it's meant to do that's that's and that's look and i'm not denying that yeah i'm not denying that like i said it set out it did exactly what it wanted to do um and if i was reviewing it like if i was saying if somebody wasn't i would probably say a lot of the same things you did and my final thing would be it's successful because it does i mean exactly exactly aren't, aren't you reviewing it kind of what we're doing here kind of giving a review um, an analysis sure. discussion 
Or are you just trying to convince me? I'm trying to a little bit of all, all three. That's fair. Um, I think it does exactly. I think you're just trying to torture me. I think I that's really what you this chose. This is about. I tried to give you a updated modern horror movie, and you wanted this. And I enjoyed watching this. Okay, like, well, I'm not, not going to say I, I inherently enjoyed the film because but no, you, fuck it's, you. It's not your type um, of movie. But I, I did enjoy watching this. I enjoyed. Not only did I enjoy seeing your artistic endeavors, um, which to be clear is the main reason I enjoyed this. But I also enjoyed kind of experiencing um, kind of a relic of a bygone era, Mm. which is totally not a relic of a bygone era in and of itself, but it felt that way. Well, I mean, to be clear, I don't think you're, whether it's an indie or, or, or um, a major motion picture, you're just not going to see this type of movie anymore. It's just not like, it's not where I think horror is moving. Um, Having seen like the new Halloween movie, even that, even though it's much more of a throwback to what the, the first one was, mm-hmm. there are a lot of things they updated. For example, like who your leads are, like what it means to be a woman in a horror film. Um, and they did that in that film. And I think this throws back to before that time. So you're just not, you're not going to see this type of film done. Um, and maybe that's what makes it nice in a weird way is that if you want to relive that kind of horror film, you can. Sure. Um, so before we yeah. end this this podcast and subsequently um, our our Halloween special series, um, Nick, what what is your takeaway? Like, how do you want to um, address our takeaway for this entire series and what we've done here? Um, well, I mean, part of it was I just I wanted to make you watch horror films. You fucking tortured me. I, know, I really did. Um, you and just I was- sat down and said, "How can I make Chris miserable?" In every possible way. And then way. Andrew Sanford on Halfway Son of the Black Man helped me with it too. Yeah, thank you, and, Andrew. I appreciate that. Uh, Actually, I sincerely do appreciate that because you at least gave me like two of the three films were comedic. And I like that. I appreciate that effort. Um, so Nick I, just tortured me I with did. gory slashers, scary, sad stuff. Only Even one. if it wasn't like, yeah, they were good movies, but they still made me feel like shit. Yeah, it's a good horror movie. I, you know, I think my I think one of the reasons I wanted to do this is one I I have an innate love for horror movies. I mm. like the genre. I like the storytelling genre. I think that when horror movies are done well, um, like Cargo, for example, which is the third film that we watched, um, I think you can wrap a lot of emotions in a single film. I think it is fun to be scared. Um, I think it is an emotion that, in a safe space, I find it enjoyable. But I think when a horror movie is done well. Because there's so much tension, it can be both heartfelt and tense and mm-hmm. scary and tell a really good story. Um, you know, I mean, I liked Quiet Place, though I saw a lot of jokes about the same stuff you were talking about. Like, yeah. what was how did they not fart for 465 days? Right. Um, and so I, I really wanted to get the perspective of someone who is a writer, right? And someone who tells stories in a different medium than I do. Because as an actor, I can sit down and watch a performance and, and a movie can be saved via a performance for me. Sure. Like, um, I can give a lot of merit to that. But as a writer, I think, I think horror is extraordinarily hard to write. Um, I think it is hard to do well because it is hard to make something that is both legitimately frightening, mm-hmm. um, to build that much tension, to find when you break it, to allow someone to laugh for a second. Yeah. Um, and so to do it well, I wanted to kind of bring you into that genre and see what worked for you and what didn't, which is why I loved quiet place. You looked at that movie and was like, here's why this didn't work for me, even though I loved it. Sure. Um, and it all made sense, right? Like for this writer, here's why I hated cargo, but I really liked it because of these aspects. What was the second movie we watched? Um, we watched quiet place cargo. Um, Oh, the Baba dude. Oh, the Bob- fucking Bob. Bob- I have erased that movie <laughs> from my memory. Um, so that's what I want to do. I Can want- I tell you, I, w- I tried to find a copy of the Baba Duke that I was just going to start leaving around your house every that few would days. So great. I couldn't find one. Like yeah, I found that. one copy on Etsy for like $300. Nope. I was like, nope, nope, not, not for a joke. Not worth it. Um, <laughs> So that's why I wanted to watch it. And that's why I, I liked doing this with you. I liked you taking a genre of movie that you didn't love and finding the merit in it and having a chance to talk about it outside of like, I just don't like this. Which, again, Fred House Massacre is nice because it's it's so different than the other movies we watched, right? right? Like, the, so so facade, uh, facade, <laughs> facade, my faciting on uh, mm-hmm. the house. Um, so facade down, like a uh, gimmick bit down. Um, I actually really enjoyed getting to do this, this series because this is something we did a lot in, in like high school. Yeah. Like we would get together, we would watch a horror movie. We would, you know, um, uh, put on our, our man boots and like, Oh, I didn't think that was scary. That was, Oh, did you like that gore? Oh, that was a fucking gore. 
Um, like I remember going to, uh, it was a little indie theater house called the Bruin view oh. when we were too, too young to actually drink. So we had to sit like behind a certain line or something. Bruin view, um, and we saw house of a thousand corpses cause it was the only place within like 50 miles that had the movie. And you love um, Rob Zombie. Or and, I, and I really, really loved Rob Zombie at the time. I still do enjoy Rob Zombie, although like in the adult pants i'm like oh god like it's just too much now yeah um the music's still good i still enjoy the music but it's just a whole like gimmick point is um like we saw that film and it was like something that we actively fought to do together yeah um and that was one of those things like we would we would play scary video games we would play uh we would watch scary movies like we would like sit down in your basement with all the lights off until 3 a.m watching whatever you know horror scary zombie laden thing i think i watched uh like i know we saw dawn of the dead together yeah we saw the new one we we went to the original through and started watching all the originals too right i think we watched everything but the the day of the dead that's the only one i've watched I know I watched that one. I don't know. Maybe I didn't watch it with you. I don't you, think I watched it I know it with I watched you. it. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a time in our lives where like our, our group of four or five friends would sit around until 3 a.m. watching movies we rented at Hollywood Video. Um, <laughs> oh, man, Hollywood Video. And it was really nice to... Like, I know we didn't actually sit down and watch these together because we're parents. We have busy lives. We yeah. don't have the time to sit around late at night and sit on the same couch and like pretend that we're not scared together. And also, um, to be clear, as much as I watch my kid, let my kid watch a lot of shit, I'm still not putting no, on the I w- No, never yeah. would I let... I, oh, God. He, when he's like three, we'll, we'll talk about it, but... But so it was really nice getting to do this again. Even if we we weren't literally doing it again, it was nice to sit around and talk about horror movies for, for a month. You know, something that I think is fun about horror movies in that same vein, and the reason why I still like doing horror movies or haunted houses or really enjoy Halloween, like Power Ranking Halloween is up there. Mm-hmm. Um is to me it is very childlike like there it's it's that throwback where like i feel like a kid right like actively trying to like scare yourself or find something that scares you is a very youthful thing that you endeavor for because you aren't like i don't know how you felt here like you aren't afraid as a kid like Mm. not in the way that you are as an adult if that makes sense like you aren't afraid of dying you aren't afraid of like you're just you're just unafraid. Like your fear is so much different. And so to watch a horror movie, to go back in that situation or a haunted house, I like that use that, that come back the youthfulness. Um, and I still get that from horror movies. They're just, they're fun in a lot of ways. And I, I think being scared is fun. It does remind me of being a teenager and a kid because that's your characters a lot of times. Yeah. Um, which is why I loved cargo was that feeling, but being a dad, right? Sure. You got to watch a horror movie. That, I tried to pick parental horror movies for you this time. Next time, do that. next time I'm not doing that for you. Um, yeah. But so w- with that, I think that that brings to a close our fantabulous fright fest for 2000 and whatever the hell year this is. 2018. Um, thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, thanks for listening. I, I think we're probably going to take a month off of bonus episodes. Um, I know we still have a monthly download episode for journey that we are now what, two, three months uh, beyond two, two months. Um, we're probably going to have to push that off until probably January because we have uh, uh, something else planned oh, do you uh, wanna, coming up. Do you want to tell us what that well, is? We'll, you know, we'll, wait. We'll, we'll, you know, I'm gonna, I, I already have a few ideas, oh, but we're going to wait until a little later in uh, November for that. Um, so keep tuning into the regular episodes and uh, and we'll have a big special announcement for, uh, for the next bonus series. Um, but for now, uh, until next time, be well. Be well.